wonderful electronic invention I want you to see. It, it looks something like this. Well, it's what we've all come to see, isn't it? A quarter mile drag race between the Tesla Model S Performance and the Taycan Turbo S on an airport runway. Quick recap then, both of these cars have two electric motors, one on each axle, so four wheel drive. The Porsche weighs a little bit more, but has a fraction more torque. The Tesla has a few more horsepower, but the Tesla is quicker from naught to 60 miles an hour, according to the claimed manufacturer figure, two tenths quicker. But the Porsche is faster, supposedly from naught to 100 miles an hour. So this race is a bit close to cool really, isn't it? And before you ask, both cars have over 85% charge. Now, launch control. So we dial this into Sport Plus mode, foot on the brake, foot on the throttle, ready to go. Three, two, one, go! Oof, good start. Oh, someone get me a neck brace. Oh, this is really even. This is neck and neck. I'm reeling it in, I'm reeling it in. That's a huge upset, the Porsche's won it. That is incredible, that's like a sane bolt losing the 100 meters, it just doesn't happen. I genuinely didn't think the Porsche was gonna win that. What a race. I know Porsche engineers are gonna be at home screaming at their screens saying, just say it Jack, our 800 volt architecture and better thermal management means that the Porsche could do these drag races all day, whereas the Tesla's performance would eventually tail off. But you didn't need to worry, boys. You won it fair and square. A one-shot, level playing field drag race, and the Tesla's been dethroned. <laughs> right, so that's the figures out the way nice and early, and good riddance, quite frankly, because the endless numerical comparisons between these two cars has been fairly tedious because if you're gonna drop a significant amount of money and actually live with either of these, then it's how they drive on the road, how they make you feel day to day that matters a hell of a lot more than what they do on the drag strip. So we've got a day on the back roads and autobahns of Germany to find out which of these two cars, all things considered, is better. If you want the most convenient electric car, the one with the most amount of interior space that will go the furthest, that has the widest charging network, well, the Tesla Model S is still king, even six years after it was launched. This is the latest and greatest Model S, of course, the Model S Performance, and we've already showed you earlier what it will do if you kick it in the nuts. But if you drive like my granny, then it should do 365 miles on the WLTP cycle, which is bloody good, isn't it? It's over 100 miles more than you get out of the Taycan Turbo S. Why is that? Well, quite a few reasons, actually. The first one being, the Tesla has a bigger battery, 100 kilowatt hours versus 93.4 in the Taycan. Uh, the Taycan also has wider tires, so it's got higher rolling resistance. The Tesla is a little bit more slippery. It has a lower drag coefficient. And I'm guessing on this one, because it's a Silicon Valley company, the power management software in a Tesla probably isn't too shabby either. However, actually I need to swap into the Porsche for this bit. Porsche decided early on in this project that it was worth sacrificing a bit of practicality, a bit of range in the name of its ultimate goal. Making this car drive as much like the 911 as it possibly could. Honestly, I spoke to the lead engineer on this project and he said that was their only objective. And do you know what? It's pretty damn close. You sit low like you're in a 911, you look out like you're in a 911, you can use the front wings to position yourself on the road like you're in a 911. And you can tell that love and attention has been lavished on all the control weights and the touch points like you get in all good Porsches. It's those little things that really matter. You see, driving along in this Tesla is quite serene, really. It's whisper quiet, it's softly sprung. In fact, we drove this actual car all the way from London to Stuttgart for this test and only had to stop a couple of times for a 45 minute charge. It really is a properly good GT, this car. Road tripping this thing is a breeze. And as we all know, the roll on performance is almost, almost painful. But when you get to a corner, it all starts to unravel a bit. The steering is super quick, but it's quite 
numb and remote. The brakes, they could be a bit stronger. The body control, it isn't great, if I'm honest. This thing rolls and pitches when you turn into a corner. It does have a low center of gravity, but even so, you can feel that this car weighs 2.2 tons. Now, for most people, stuff like that doesn't really matter. It doesn't affect them, it's not a deal breaker, but for Porsche, that's the stuff it cares about. Which is why the steering in the Taycan is superb. It's not overly hyperactive, not overly caffeinated, but you do feel like there's a direct connection to the front axle. In fact, the best compliment I can pay it is that it feels familiar. It feels like other Porsches. The air suspension is pretty plush, even on these 21 inch wheels, and the brakes, the stopping power and the braking feel is in another league to the Tesla. Admittedly, this car has carbon ceramic discs as standard, but actually 80% of the time, what I'm feeling through my right foot is regen. It's artificial. It's not pads on discs, which is remarkable, really. Nobody's ever made fake brakes feel quite as real. And the body control on this car, well, it's just witchcraft, really. Admittedly, Porsche has thrown pretty much every chassis aid it has at this car. So the lesser models that cost a bit less but don't get the PDCC active anti-roll bars and the four-wheel steering as standard might not be as clever, but I can only drive what's been put in front of me. And the way this thing goes around a corner is just magic. You turn it in, the front end sticks, and then because you've got that razor sharp throttle response, you can just pick a point somewhere just past the apex and then slam the throttle. You've got all the grip and you're just boosted down the next straight. It's absolutely amazing to behold. And because you've got all that grip, because the body control is so good, it just feels much, much faster than the Tesla point to point. It's no twinkle toes, don't get me wrong, but it definitely doesn't feel 2.3 tons. But here's the thing, and this applies to both cars. There are a couple of things that limit the enjoyment when you're, shall we say, driving enthusiastically in an electric car. And the first is sound. In this Tesla, well, it doesn't really make any, maybe a high-pitched whine from the electric motors. Whereas in the Taycan, well, Porsche's actually made quite a big effort with the sound that the Taycan makes. If I look down here, there's a button called electric sport sound. So if I press on there, then you get more hums at low speed and then this kind of whooshy sci-fi whistling noise when you press the throttle. You hear that? I quite like it. Yeah. The other thing is the lack of gears. The Taycan actually has a two-speed gearbox. It will change up at about 60 miles an hour when you're on a full bore launch control. The Tesla is a single speed, but the effect is the same. You don't have any gears to change. You don't have any paddles to hit. You don't have a stick in the middle of the center console to waggle around. And what you end up finding is that changing gear is the way we punctuate the driving experience on a good road. It's the way we find our rhythm. And without that, you tend to arrive at corners with a bit more speed than you realize. And at that point, weight isn't necessarily your friend. Time for a top up. And right here is the Tesla's advantage. The Tesla now comes with a CCS adapter, so both cars can use pretty much any public charging point, but only the Model S can use Tesla's massive global network of superchargers. However, in ideal conditions, it's the Porsche that can charge faster at up to 270 kilowatts, which means 22 minutes for a five to 80% charge. Whereas the Model S can only charge it up to around 150 kilowatts, so it takes a little longer. All right, so while these two are juicing up, I can literally feel the electricity vibrating through this cable. Um, I thought I'd give you a little look around uh, how much space you get with each car, because in this regard, they are actually quite different. In the front, we've already been sitting there for quite a long time. The Porsche, you sit a lot lower. The center console's higher. It's more of a kind of cockpit enveloping feel. The Tesla, you're a bit more perched up, it's a bit more airy. They've made more of the fact that you don't have to have a transmission tunnel, so the center console's lower. You can breathe a bit more. Frunks or fruits, depending on which way you butter your bread, they both have them, boots in the front basically, but the Tesla's is about twice as big as the one you get in the Taycan. Back seats, now 
I'll admit, I probably got a little carried away when I was doing my walk around video with the Taycan when I said it had plenty of room in the back. It doesn't, I was getting carried away. It's a bit cramped back there for anyone over five foot eight, which is me, a bit tight. The Tesla on the other hand, lots more leg room, lots more space for proper adults, three of them across the rear bench, lots and lots of space. Boots, this is where it gets quite interesting actually because on the Taycan you have just a little notch back lid here and you can't put the back seats down. In there you've got about the same amount of space as you get in a VW Golf. In the Tesla however, you've got a massive hatchback at the back and you can put down the rear seats. Do that and you've got pretty much the same amount of space as you get in a Mercedes E-Class wagon. And while we're here, I thought there's a couple of features on the Taycan that you might want to see. Um, they're quite amusing, if I'm honest. The first is this, the spoiler is in hand cleaning mode. Now, the only purpose of that mode is that when you're washing your Taycan, you can fit your chamois leather under the edges here and give it a proper clean. And the other is the charging port flap. You've probably already seen it gliding effortlessly back into the bodywork, but I've just discovered that it's got something called a winter mode. Now that means when it senses an obstruction, usually caused by ice on a really cold morning, the motor will apply 20% more torque. Have you ever heard of anything more German than that? In both interiors, the screen is king. Porsche prefers quantity with five in total, while Tesla keeps things simpler with two. One, the size of a five-a-side football pitch. The Porsche doesn't get over-the-air updates like the Tesla yet, although it is coming, but both have unique ways to keep boredom to a minimum. Porsche is the first car to have an Apple Music app fully integrated. Just link your account and your full library history and even Porsche's own curated playlists are there for you to fiddle with. Tesla, predictably, goes one further. On top of the karaoke, arcade games and fart apps we already know and admire, there's now a Tesla theatre app that lets you link your YouTube and Netflix accounts to the car and watch whatever you want so long as you're parked up. Right, so we've done drag racing, we've driven on B roads, we've charged up, we've caught up on Peaky Blinders, but being as we are in Germany, there's just one thing left to do, and that's drive as fast as we possibly can on the public road, which is fortunate actually, because um, we're a little bit late for our flight. So there is a point to all this. First things first, I need to activate night assist mode. And now we're just looking for one of our favorite road signs. Ah, there we go. Okay, so this car is limited to 161 miles an hour, which is about 259 kilometers an hour. The Tesla is limited to 155 miles an hour, which is about 250 kilometers an hour. So Ollie should be having quite a lot of fun as well. All right, we're already up to 230, 240, 250. 259, that's top speed. We're still going. 265, the car shouldn't be going this quickly, but it is. 268, <laughs> that was easy. If anyone was wondering, Porsche's built in a little bit of extra speed at the top end in your Taycan Turbo S. Wow, man, that was easy. Okay, so there was a little bit of science to our top speed run. Ollie and I both clocked the instantaneous energy consumption when our respective cars hit their top speeds. And the point in that is that we can give you the theoretical range that both cars would hit if they were to run with a full battery at their top speeds until they ran out of juice. A little bit of retrospective Top Gear maths needed here and a little bit of movie magic. So here's those numbers. Don't say that Top Gear doesn't bring you the facts that matter. Now, I know a definitive verdict is what we all want, one car wiping the floor with the other, but the truth is that all of us, the media, the fans, have crushed these two together as arch rivals when, in every way but straight line speed, they go about their business in totally different ways. If ease of use, interior space, connectivity, and one hell of a party trick are your priorities, then the Tesla is still king. But if you value the subtle ways in which a driver's car moves down the road and interacts with the driver and have a surplus 50 grand, then the Taycan is a superior machine to operate. Me, I'll take the Taycan all day and watch Netflix from the sofa instead. 